Hey everybody, welcome back. Uh, sorry that I haven't been uh, posting any new videos for a while. Uh, first of all, COVID happened. Second of all, I had a, a, a new baby born. So I was quite busy uh, with a lot of sleepless nights. Uh, but I have been still working and I've been uh, creating a whole bunch of open source projects. So I wanted to share one with you. This open source project um, was a result of me doing a whole bunch of things with uh, Fargate and CDK. And I'm going to go over some of these services with you. Uh, I'm also going to go over the actual code as well. It's going to be really quick. I, I want to make sure that uh, this whole video takes no more than 10 minutes. If it does, sorry. So let's start with the GitHub repo. So this is the repo. Uh, it's under my username, vbudilov uh, slash Fargate CDK web service. Basically, I have two folders here, Fargate CDK and uh, web service. Web service is the sample application, sample web service written in Kotlin that uh, you can deploy to test your Fargate uh, deployment. And the Fargate CDK is the whole infrastructure that you need in order to run a web service from A to Z, including an SSL certificate. So let's get started. Let me just intro some of these services to you and uh, frameworks. So first of all, let's start with CDK. CDK is a framework that allows you to provision your um, AWS infrastructure in a repeatable manner using your favorite language, such as Java, Python, or TypeScript. So basically, you write your code, and uh, when you run CDK synth, synthesize it creates cloud formation templates out of your stacks out of your code stacks and then the actual cdk cli uses those cloud formation templates to provision those resources using cloud formation so basically it still uses cloud formation to provision your resources so you have that experience and that you know stability of cloud formation um, all it does is just it mainstreams some of the um, heavy lifting so basically one line of uh, cdk code can translate into about 250 lines of uh, cloud formation definition files which is a lot it's a huge time saver i mean i find it to be the best way to work with cloud formation at this point of time i would not do anything um, manually when it comes to cloud formation. I'll use CDK. Uh, the CDK team also is working on a couple of other things. So at the moment they're working on the CDK for Terraform. Same concept. Uh, you write your code and uh, uh, when you synthesize it creates the Terraform templates which is great if uh, for some reason you, go, you don't want to lose cloud, use cloud formation. And the other thing is the uh, um, CDK for Kubernetes. So again, just simplifies the creation of Kubernetes definition files, such as deployment and things like that. All right, so I've introduced you to this uh, GitHub repo. Let's dive into the code. All right, so this is the actual CDK project. Quite simple. Uh, you have this app. This app defines all the stacks. The stacks consist of a bunch of constructs. And the constructs are actually the lower or the lowest level kind of entity that you can use in your application, in your stacks. So as an example, in this particular case, this is a construct. The certificate is a construct. What this line does is it provisions your uh, certificate for you. Uh, when it's run, you actually have to uh, verify that you own this domain. So you're going to get an email notification uh, and uh, you will have to click on the link. It's going to verify your domain or AWS is going to verify, AWS ACM uh, service is going to verify that you own the domain and then it can proceed. If you don't do that, the whole CDK deploy process is going to fail because it's going to wait and wait and wait and wait and then it's just going to give up eventually one way or another. So make sure that you have access to the admin uh, uh, username, uh, I mean, an uh, email address. But let me back up and just give you the overall architecture. So what does this do? What does this provision? This provisions a bunch of services that allow you to run your container in ECS Fargate. What do you need? Well, since uh, I want to make sure that 
um, the connection to my web service is secure, I'm going to have an uh, SSL connection. In order for me to have an SSL connection, I need a certificate to provision. And the service to provision the certificate is ACM. Now, this certificate is going to be used by the ALB. ALB is the Application Load Balancer Service. Um, the ALB will communicate with the ECS Fargate cluster. So I need to obviously provision the cluster as well. But on top of that, it also needs to understand whether the cluster and the tasks are healthy. So I need to uh, set up health checks. And uh, let me find those health checks. These are the health checks. So the service that I've provided as an example is listening for this uh, context root ping. And it's going to return a 200 and a pong. And basically, the ALB is going to be uh, hitting this endpoint to make sure that the task, the actual container is healthy. Well, what else? Well, we need to make sure that we uh, set up the appropriate ports. We need to make sure that we actually create the Fargate service. And this is how you define the Fargate service. And uh, we want to make sure that we properly define the container. So here is uh, my, you know, service port. So this is the port that my application is running on, it's listening on. Um, this is the logging information that we set up. All of these values can be modified here. So you don't have to start with uh, two gigs of memory. Uh, you can start with, uh, let's say, uh, half of that and half of the CPU. But overall, when you run this application, and I'll just show you the command that you can use to run it, you will get a fully functioning Fargate cluster provisioned, and you can use it from uh, the start, right? So you can kind of use it. Now, when it provisions the cluster, and when it provisions those resources, as I mentioned, uh, there's a couple of times that uh, it will start interacting with you. So the first time is when it provisions the certificate. The second time is when it provisions the actual Fargate cluster. Since the Fargate cluster is uh, uh, listening or is basically configured to, since this uh, container task, container definition, is configured for a specific uh, ECS, I mean ECR repository, which is the um, container image repository service. You need to have some kind of an image in that repository. So you will have to manually build the web service and upload it to ECR. If you don't do that, again, the whole process is going to time out and it's going to fail. So obviously you can uh, automate this. I chose not to because it would have taken me much more time and uh, there's better ways of doing it. The way I prefer automating it is by uh, checking into GitLab. That's my kind of favorite uh, uh, Git repository service. And uh, I set up my pipeline there and then basically just... Uh, uh, deploys my images to ECR, but you can do it manually and you can go to the console, uh, look up ECR and you can see uh, all the steps that you need to follow in order to upload an image. Build it and upload it. So basically, you're good to go once you follow these directions. Now let me show you the service. So the service, again, is very simple. So uh, I'm using uh, Kotlin, that's uh, probably my, one second, mm. right, so, uh, it's my uh, favorite language at the moment uh, for backend development, um, so let's look at some of the code. 
So I use HTTP 4K as the uh, microservice framework. It's great. I love it. You don't have to use it. You can use whatever you want. Again, I write my backend uh, uh, services using Kotlin. That's what I like. And uh, hold on. All right. Yeah. So this one. Um, so this is uh, sorry, guys. Uh, I was uh, trying to figure out whether I'm using the right uh, or I've opened the right project here. So I, I have opened the right project here. Uh, so uh, this is the endpoint uh, that I was talking about, the health check. Uh, these are the uh, this is the other resolver, the meta resolver, and all that does is reads a value from the parameter store and just displays it and this is how I save the value to the parameter store so if we go back here to the certificate stack actually not to the ECS Fargit stack, stack after I do all this whole deployment here right what I want to do is I want to make sure that I propagate the value of the ECR, actually this one, uh, of the ECR name, and store it in a parameter store. Now this is I don't really have to do it. Uh, I do this for other services, such as when I provision Cognito or when I provision the Elasticsearch service. Uh, I want my other services, web services, to automatically uh, figure out which endpoints to use, right? But for demo purposes. I just decided to include this code. So this code will create a parameter store value uh, with this name and the value is going to be the name of the ECR repository, which is great, right? Because in your service then, all you have to do is read the parameter store and this is the code to read the parameter store it's very simple uh, don't judge i mean uh, didn't spend too much time on creating it but this is basically what it does uh, this is the value that it's going to read from the parameter store and uh, i mean this is the name that it's looking for the key name that it's looking for and it's going to store the values and then it's just going to populate the values so basically uh, a best practice is uh, not to hard code. The best practice is to uh, have some kind of a parameter store, some kind of a uh, repository that you can query to get your values. And uh, I chose to use parameter store because first of all, it's free. And second of all, it's so well integrated into a whole bunch of these services that I don't really even have to think twice about it. All right, so let me show you what CDK does. So I already have this here. I was playing around with this here, but this is the Fargate CDK project, right? And uh, when you do, uh, basically when you do a Maven package and then a CDK synth, so let's do a synth, CDK synth here. Which what this does is basically takes the code and synthesizes it into CloudFormation. So as you can see, this is the, the folder that it created and it created a cloud formation template for each one of the stacks. So let's take a look at this one. Let me just do. All right, so not a huge uh, template file, right? But let me do the Mari Fargate stack. Actually, uh, yeah, let's do this one. It's huge, right? All of this you would have had to write yourself. So let's do a count. 957 lines of cloud formation code. 957 lines. That's crazy so let 
these lands of codes or the, the, this, these lands of code uh, have produced 900 more than 900 lands of cloud formation cool right and it's so easy because uh, you know you have auto completion you have a lot a lot of uh, uh, utilities when you're uh, writing this within IntelliJ so you're really in a much better position to create something fast and repeatable um, by the way what you can do with these templates afterwards is you can even version control them if you decide to do so so uh, at the end of the day you're gonna get a project which will allow you to deploy your container uh, into an ECS Fargate cluster and uh, with SSL enabled. Guys, enjoy, and if you have any questions, let me know.